I have a bit of a controversial question to ask you. Yes. Do you think that this boss bitch movement that's happened in the last, say, two decades has helped or hurt women as a whole as far as their sex life? Do you think it's help them get better, more sex, or do you think it has hindered their sex oh life? Oh my God, that's a great question. How would you define like a boss bitch? Somebody who's well, like, this, I, I don't the, need a man? The, the, or... Yeah, the, the woman empowering movement to climb the corporate ladder, make as much or more money as the man, like be independent, you don't need a man. Like that That movement has really climbed in the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that it's necessarily bad or good. I'm just curious to, if you, since you've been doing this so yes. long, had have noticed that you get a lot of women now in their 30s, 35, 40 years old, super successful, maybe even great looking, got all these things working for them, but not having sex or not finding yeah. a partner. Mm, that's such a guy. I, I hadn't tied it to, to that movement, but I think, I think that it definitely, so the, yeah, I mean, I do. I think that women trying to be more like men has been detrimental for our sexuality and polarity. So this is a concept. I don't know if you guys have, have ever covered like poli sexual polarity on the show. And it's a little bit, people get kind of tripped up with the term masculine and feminine. Sure. But we all have masculine and feminine of inside course. of us, right? So we all have a combination of that. But in order for attraction to happen, you need to have someone's leading and someone's following. So traditionally, the masculine is the leader and the feminine is the energy, right? And so so right now, for example, I'm I'm in my masculine right now. I would say I'm I'm talking, I'm doing my business. And a lot of my day, I'm in my, I'm going to give you like a, a real life example to explain this. I'm a masculine, but like I brought in a business. I got people work for me. I'm doing shit, right? Like the getting shit done. That is the masculine energy. But in order for like sex polarity to happen, you need attraction and you need the opposite. It's like, think of like a, um, like the, the plus and minus of a, a, um, Magnet. A, a magnet, right? Yeah. So if you have two pluses, two minus, it's not going to attract, right. but you, you need that. So that's what sexual chemistry is. So in order for it to happen, for example, if I have a day at home, I'm just going to give my, where I am working all day and I'm in my, but I want to feel aroused and turned on. I know that I can't, this is what my self-knowledge pillar. I can't go from work to like be turned on with my boyfriend because he is, when, when our sex happens, he is more of the masculine. I'm in the feminine. I'm not necessarily dominating in the bedroom. Sometimes I can, but I'm more of a, I'm more of the, um, of a sub. I think again, you need that in all of sex. You need a dominant sub to, for leading and following. So what I need to do is to get, when I'm in my, and also we work together. Like he's helped me with some business stuff. Like it's a lot of time. And I know that what I need to do is I need to shut my laptop. I need to take a shower. I need to do some breath work. Sometimes I masturbate to get into my body, into my feminine. I need to move my body. I need to dress in something that makes me feel good. Put on like perfume, makeup, get into a, a place where I'm feeling more, in touch with my feminine because that is mm. what I want to bring to the table. And then when I'm more of my feminine, he reacts by being more in his masculine, right? Because he's also has a lot of feminine energy too. Like he's very nurturing and empathic and all these things, but they work together synergistically. So they, then the, I do kind of explain this more in the book because, but, but what is happening with this boss bitch movement is that like, I don't need a man, I don't need anything, but we're in our, we're getting shit done. And then we, there's no room. There's no room for a guy. If you're again, heterosexual relationship, but again, in, in gay couples and lesbian couples, there's also masculine and feminine energy right. because someone has to always lead and follow. So if you, if you're showing up of like, I got everything done, I, I don't need a man, then, then we all want to feel of use and utility. So then there's nowhere for that person. If there's no vulnerability, I think what we see with boss bitch in this movement is like, there's no vulnerability. There's no softness. There's no opening for the masculine to come in. So that's kind of how I see it. Does that? Yeah, yeah it I does. And I think, I think it tends to be generally the, the male, you know, with the masculine, the female with more of the feminine, but it could be either or, right? Yeah. You could have, uh, you know, it'd be different. But like, I find that with, my wife, like I, I find her, m m I mean, some of the biggest turn ons for me with her is when I see her, like I came home the other day from work and she had both the kids and mm -hmm. she was cooking and she yeah. was like nurturing and she was with my son and he was loving on her and holding the baby. And I like, I was like, oh my God, when they go to bed, like it's, this is, it's because <laughs> that for me was such that's a feminine. tremendous. She's and, nurturing, and, she's caretaking, she's empathic. Those yeah. Are, and that for me was huge. That's like yeah. a big deal. And then like, there was one time when I did this big sales presentation with a bunch of people and I'm standing, you know, doing my presentation or whatever. She was in the back and afterwards she was like, I'm so turned on by what you were doing because exactly. it was for her, it was that energy, yes. that masculine energy. So 
That's yeah. it. The reason yeah. why I asked is I, I see actually lots of examples in my own family, in my circles and friends it, with the women in there that are actually are very strong, uh, independent, kind of have that that boss bitch energy. And what I find, it, and they, they're challenged in the relationship and sex department. Yeah. And what I see is that they have this really high masculine energy, but yet they're also physically attracted to a a that masculine inger, energy. And okay. I feel like if you're if you're a, a female and you have that much masculine energy, it, you're you're probably most likely going to need a, a partner who has a lot of feminine energy to probably match mm -hmm. really well. But they don't want that. They don't want the the beta dude or the guy right. that's not a go getter. So it's like they they have all this masculine energy, but then they also want someone at their level or higher. And I think it just it just shrinks their That's, dating. Yeah, I could totally see that. And what I would say to these women is that I would I see them as being really disconnected and not embodied at all and not in touch with their sexual energy and not in touch with who they are and what they want. And, you know, when we start to, you know, sex begets sex. So the more we get to like cultivate our sexual energy, like I think that it's really hard to be in your in your masculine all day long. And, you know, I would ask, like, how often are these women, like, moving their body? Are they dancing? Are they masturbating? Are they in touch with their, their whatever makes them feel feminine? And I think that that's what is attractive to the more, like, alpha types that you're talking about. But yeah. they're, there's no, they're not showing any of that. They're going to dinner and they're interviewing the guy, like, on their date. They're, like, putting it out there. Like, what right. are you going to do for me? What are you going to do for me? But someone, and again, this is all generalization stereotyping. Sure. But if you're in that masculine, you're not going to see where you it doesn't mean in softness and vulnerability is not weakness. So I oh, think for these women, right. they do like, this is a, like I, I've been there too. I've been places where I'm so in my thing and I'm not, and I have not softened that either. So I've had to learn this as well of like allowing someone to, to care, to care for me and to show my vulnerability. And so that's a practice because I think that being tough and being out there, it's like, it's not okay. And I think that to find what you want, you have to learn to, be more in touch with your. Yeah, I find that you would be a great. You're a great example of this because I th I think of you a bit as a kind of a boss bitch chick. You have yeah. all these things going for you like that. Very independent. Probably necessarily don't need a man financially and no, things like right. that. So how has that been in your life? Do you typically uh, are the men that you date or been with? Are they typically very feminine because of that? Or have you been able to navigate that where you know you want this masculine guy, so you know how to make that switch of like, okay, at work, I can be boss bitch, but then also when I transfer over into my relationship, I need to learn to switch over. Like, what is... I, I think I've done... I've had both. I've yeah, had, I want to hear... I think I've definitely had both kinds of guys that I've dated. Um, I think that I need guys who are very, like, empathic and vulnerable, and maybe they're, they're just in touch with their feminine more so, but I think... I've been attracted to all different types, but I also am really vulnerable. Like I always have a lot going on and I've like, I've always need a lot of, I don't know, like certain things are harder for me, like business stuff. So I've also dated guys who are really good at like helping with my business. And so I, you know, it's like my current guy. Um, but I think I've just been in touch. I'm more attracted to the person. I, I guess, I don't know. I want somebody, I don't need somebody to take care of me in the traditional way, but I want somebody who can, I don't know. What am I looking for? I'm looking for. I have you know, seen, have you answer. seen that? I mean, have you had, can you give an example or can you think yeah. of a time where that has like you've, because of your energy, your masculine energy, that it's conflicted with the partner where it's like, you know, because you are that way. And then maybe you get a guy that is a little more alpha or masculine. And that is an, an area where you guys conflict because yeah. you have too much masculine. Yes, energy. absolutely. And then it doesn't really work, but I think it's like nuanced because it's like, how do we get together like there's sometimes with my partner, like I want him to, I don't know. I mean, it's a really good, I'm trying to think of it. It's just a balance. It's all a dance because it's not just about the sex. It's about like, how do we communicate? Mm -hmm. How do we handle different areas of our life? How do we, you know, I think I want somebody who's got his own stuff going on and he's got his own like life. Like I don't want to be the one who's taking care of everything. So I think for me, the ma a man who's understands his purpose, like the masculine is someone who's got a purpose yeah. and they, they are very purpose driven. And they are very like independent and they have their goal setting and they are sort of a, they're structured. And so I'm very attracted to that, even though I have that. So I feel like that is, but then I need to be, if someone's too much like that, I also need somebody who's, has like the em empathy and the softness too. So I don't know. I guess I've well, had a Well, a man that's not in touch with his feminine is probably not going to be able to understand yours. Exactly. So that's probably why it's it's so important. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I need someone. I think nowadays too, there's just, there's just, I don't know, there's just more room and more space, I think, for men to really start to 
to, 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 to feel more and to also own their masculine. But for me personally, I've dated so many. Like if you lined up all my boyfriends, they would all be very, very different. Really? Yes. <laughs> I think Because now I'm thinking about them. But I think my boyfriend now is a little bit more like he's got two daughters. Like he's a little bit more maybe, I don't know, maybe he's more in his feminine sometimes. And um, But then when we're both like talking business, like it's so not hot. So then I have to get to more of my feminine when he goes there. Like I, Because <laughs> I see this too. I'm like, Oh God, I've been like such a nightmare lately. I have to really kind of like bring it. And then I try to do my things like I'm going to make dinner or I'm going to like, we're going to go in nature. Or we're going to hike. We're going to, cause that is the feminine. Well, that's what I, I think that's what I'm searching for for you because I think yes. you are such a good example. And I don't necessarily think that like, because you've dated all over the spectrum, that's it's good or bad or really explains it. It's more like, imagine if you've got those traits and you want a man who's also got some of those masculine traits, there's certain practices that you probably have to put in place. Yeah in order to get that or receive that kind of love uh -huh. from uh, from the type of man that you want. Because yeah. when I think of these friends and, and and family members that come to mind that are like this, they uh, they really struggle. I mean, it's like they get one extreme or the other. They tend to get like, okay, well, I have all this masculine energy, so I need to find this like super feminine guy. Then they get this guy that's like super beta. He has no purpose. He's not driven. He's like, oh, I'll be a stay-at-home dad. I got no problem with it. And it's like, she's like, that's oh God, I don't want that. You know, I want a guy that's at my level and pushing me. But it's like, okay, well then you get that guy and that guy's very purpose-driven. He's a leader. He wants to run the house. He wants to run the show. It's like, and you're definitely not that chick. So like, how does that- They need to, I would tell these women that they are so in their masculine. They need to do some work cultivating their feminine. Hmm. They need to- turn off their, you know, turn off their phones, take some more time off work, go do like a yoga retreat, spend time in the ocean, in nature, cooking, getting back to themselves, masturbating. I'm telling you like self-love, <laughs> taking baths. Um, these are all the ways like getting really going on a women's retreat. But honestly, doing those things and, and, and sustaining it, not just like a week in Mexico and then they come back and they go back. It is a day. It is a this is something I'd say was daily. It's breath work. Yeah. It's meditation. It's connection. It's journaling. It's it's all the things that are kind of in the zeitgeist right now, manifesting. But that is all the feminine. And so if they are very, if they are, if they think about the women, do they do any of those things? The women I'm talking about. You know, about? some of them do. And I think, uh, I think what some of them also, because you touched on it earlier that I think is connected to this, is the unraveling how we were imprinted, like from our parents. Yes. Like, so the women that I'm thinking of, they had very strong, independent women moms that basically told them that when they were like you don't need a man you go yes. you make your own money you do this and empower them and they ended up being these great successful smart women now but they have that imprinted that they need to be this type of a woman so much where they probably need to they can't be vulnerable soften they have to yeah, be vulnerable we they, need to, they need to unpack that and revel so unravel that more and go yeah. like it's you know because it's they i know they do a lot of the the yoga and in touch with their body and some of the things they're saying. So I, I see that side. I think they, they're, they're sexual. They come, they grow up in this sexual family that I already told you about. So I think they have that aspect going for them positively, but I think that they've been told that they, they need to be this, mm -hmm. this strong woman and not need a man per se. <sighs> That's that, definitely and, the last 20, 30 years. I had that as well. I had that same, my mom was like, never rely on a man to take care yeah. of you. I was like, okay, like, I guess I got to do it on my own. Right. And I did. And that, yeah, I think some of that has probably been detrimental because I didn't really understand the need for, I had so many fears around partnership and I can do it all on my own. And then I realized like, no, I do, I do want a partner. And then I had to do a lot of work on what I actually want and thinking about all the, like, not just like, you know, you could write down things like I want him to have look a certain way. Like it's about like manifesting or being just very fucking clear and specific. Like, how do I want to feel with this partner? Like I would have them do some exercises about, what do they actually want in a partner? Like, what do you want to feel with them? What do you picture it? Like picture, you know, as it already is, like, what are you guys doing on a Saturday together? What are they, what are they wearing? What, what role are they taking in the house? What do you, how do you want to feel with them? You know, you want, do you want to feel loved? Do you want to feel cherished? Do you want to feel safe? Um, and then you got to like really do the scenarios of like walk and then unlearning all the other things. Like maybe they were dating toxic guys that didn't make them feel good. So mm. to supplant that, you have to think about what you actually do want. And I have a, I have a show up podcast I did on manifesting your partner, which I don't often talk about manifesting and feel like, oh God, that guy, you might lose people with that. But the truth is it's science, it's energy. It's like where you put your attention, that's what's going to happen to you. So getting really clear, because when you get clear on anything- yeah, then you see it. You see it. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, that is not attractive to me. That person is nowhere on my list. Like I had a note in my phone of all the things that were really important to me in a partner. And I was able to, you know, find that pretty much. Yeah. I, I think it's very like, fucking clear. It's like when you buy a new pair of shoes and then you start noticing everybody has right. the same exactly. pair of shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Oh, those are there the whole time. Yeah. No, I, you know what's so terrible about that message that you don't need, uh, you know, because replace it with, you know, don't say a man. You don't need a partner. Yeah. 
Everybody needs people. We do. That's such a crazy message to sell yes. to anybody. And it's it's like men tend to be told like, um, if you settle down with a partner or you find a partner, it's uh, it's not fun. It's not going to be exciting. You should just go make money and just go hook up with people. Don't have any deep connections, which is also another terrible message. I think exactly. we're being sold terrible messages. We are being sold terrible messages. There's no depth to that. There's no substance. And like studies and studies, t- time again, they will tell you that what we really need to be happy at the end of life, people say it's their connections yes. with people. It's it's um that's why this loneliness epidemic truly is an epidemic. We want connections, we want intimacy, we want trust, we want all of those things. Do you think the reduction, the 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 fact that people are having less sex is is connected to the loneliness? I do. That's just it's just a side effect of that. Yeah, loneliness, isolation, so you know, um, technology, yeah. and. Maybe there's been a reaction to like the hug up culture now. It's like don't hug up, and so mm. yeah, I think. Oh, really? Do you it. think there's a bit of pendulum I swing think back? I do. Or? I do. Mm. Like I think when I first started, like, and here's the thing: like maybe f- almost twenty years ago, there was like six or seven books that came out about like the hook up culture. It was like, all about hooking up, but what the hook up culture was: people just getting really wasted in college and then having sex and feeling like they're like liberated. But that's not embodied sex. That's mm-hmm. not present sex. That's not connected. That's not it's the best sex of your life totally disconnected. So yeah. then maybe that on top of like, you know, a lot of young people, like even during the pandemic and social media, the apps and all those things, and maybe parents being more like, I don't know, I, you know, I, kind of talking to their kids more about safety. And I don't know, like as a result of that, we're just mm. seeing like less sex happening. 